Good morning, everybody. Today is the 20th day of the month of June, 2022. My name is Heritage Adisa, market analyst at HFM Nigeria. Um, quickly, as usual, we'll check through the markets, um, figure out what is the dominant sentiment, um, what the driving forces are, the catalyst pushing asset prices, um, if they provide opportunities, and then how we can take advantage of it. Like I always say, please remember that this is just a communication material and nothing in this communication contains or should be considered as investment advice or investment recommendation. Just acknowledge that investments in FX and save the products is characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and that any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk for which is usually responsible and live. This morning across board, we have a slightly positive start of the day, although the environment that we have is still very much fragile, like what we had really in yesterday's session. Yesterday, we started more positive, but I remember saying that it was really not, there was really nothing much there. And before the end of the day, excuse me, and before the end of the day, all the positivity got eroded, right? It's so all we're still looking at as well in today's session. Now, I said this earlier, I said after a lackluster performance earlier in today's session, right, way in the night, in the middle of Asian session, we had so much lackluster performance, where asset prices are not really moving, you know, in one particular direction, just all over the place, very lukewarm, right? Risk sentiment has mostly improved across board. Risk assets are now trading in the positive side, although, you know, when you consider the lack of fresh impactful catalyst, and you consider the fact that we're also approaching month end, quarter end, and even half year end, the flows we're seeing in the markets right now is a bit tricky. Now, equities are generally higher today, right? You look across, but mostly higher, the VIX is down, which is also similar to what we had in yesterday's session. But don't forget that yesterday it ended lower. So if there is no catalyst driving it up right now, who says it can really end lower at the end of the day? So that means that you should also be more patient and more cautious with environments like this. US already is up, up about 0.41% so far today. But even when you look at the entire moves that we've seen so far, it's still marginal, still within yesterday's ranges and hasn't really broken through to new highs just yet. The bond yield side, generally higher. The benchmark 10-year, US 10-year um, um, bond yields also pushing higher as well today. You look at the measures of volatility are also lie all of the also lower, all of these are pointing towards a more positive start in the day. Now, commodity prices are up generally today. Um, we we'll have oil prices pushing higher, right? Particularly, we also have, um, now for oil prices, for example, US oil, for example, continues that upside from Friday. We had upside on Friday, upside yesterday, and it's continues all today. But there's been some, you know, supply concerns. First of all, we have disruptions in Libya. Um, we also have, you know, France president also talking to the Saudis and UAE generally, where we're mostly so, um, soliciting for more oil production. But they have said that they've almost gotten to maximum production but on their own side, right? So clearly, that means that we might not really even get more and more supply, which obviously supports, you know, price as well, right? US oil right now today is up 1.4%, um, around the $111 per barrel, you know, level. Now, we had some positive COVID updates from China, where... Um, they expected they are expected to cut quarantine time for international travelers from 14 days to seven days, right? That's a positive for markets as well. Um, even household, you know, quarantine as well has also been cut, I think, three days from seven days, which is also a good thing. But apart from this, there's really not so much in terms of new flows, uh, new drivers. And like I said yesterday, you know, when we approach like the kinds of um, end of the month, quarter, and even half year that like we have so far. There's so much risk for profit taking, so much risk for portfolio rebalancing. All of those things can see asset prices, you know, move in a very, you know, not or not really as predictable as you would like it to be. Especially the fact that we have, you know, lack of fresh catalyst, and then we're in the middle of hiking and then slower growth, and then can central banks really slow down? All of those things make it a bit tricky, you know, for us to really look into, you know, what we have so far now. In FX, right, higher commodity prices, really oil, has seen Canadian dollar push up, you know, to the top of the majors. Aid is also not far behind. But then you look at CHF is also just very close there. And then CHF being a safe haven currency, even though we have support for CHF on the back of um, the SNB, there's that. So it hasn't really changed. But then you still want to, you know, see the kinds of mix that we have in FX and that just says more patient. And uh, you look on the other side, on the weaker side, GPY still lags the most. Um, less higher energy, um, equity prices 
Higher equity prices also clearly weighs on JPY. Higher oil prices also weighs on JPY because Japan is a net importer of oil. So there is that. Um, but then uh, just followed by even the um, Bank of Japan also weighs on the JPY because they're all through the response. But not far from JPY, you have NZD and pounds. So clearly all of that highlights the more mixed um, performance and effect. Now, the focus for the week remains, you know, on central bank speak, central bank speakers, um, in terms of, for example, now we have ECB Lagarde already on the wires right now. And then the reason why we're paying attention to what he's saying is, we want to know what it's like in terms of interest rate parts going forward. Will they continue to hike? Will they slow down in their hikes on the back of slow economic, you know, performance? What's, what's, what's it going to be like, right? Are they from loading right now to, you know, slow down later? So we had some talk like that from, you know, um, the Federal Reserve. So all of those things are very, very much, you know, um, the focus for us. But with such close proximity to month and quarter and half year end, as well as even the lack of fresh impactful catalysts, one cannot get too carried away with the moves that we're seeing so far. And this is a very good lesson that we learned from yesterday's session. So I'm being more on the patient side. Even the moves that we've seen, the biggest movers we've seen, some heading into resistance. We'll look at charts in a moment. Um, you know, not really giving that strong you know, conviction, basically. And remember that when you're trading, it's more about, not just about pairing strength versus weakness, not just about understanding what's going on. It's about having picked a good trade. The idea is having picked a pair to trade. The idea is how convinced are you on the particular idea um what's your skill is on one to, on a scale of one to ten right how convinced are you if it's not giving you a seven eight it's not giving you a nine you know you have so much bots and so much can be's and so much you know messy um not, not really clear flow i think you're better off sitting on the sidelines and waiting for something more more concrete you know to leverage on now on the calendar today we already have ecb lagarde already on wires later today we have ecb lane we have feds dali as well you know a lot of other central bank speakers even some from bank of england right um it's going to be interesting it's going to be the major focus and then apart from that we also have u.s consumer confidence out you know later in the day which obviously will tell us how much consumers are feeling confidence going forward in terms of what they're feeling um, going forward and it's interesting because if consumers are more confident that means that they will spend more right which obviously is good for the economy so we want to like see how that plays out even though expedition is for a weaker 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 number compared to the previous one but we really have to see how that plays out now this is what i'm talking about on the equity side this is us 500 very good benchmark right yes lackluster performance early in the day down and then we saw some improvement on the back of the covid you know updates right, from china but even since then we've had that you know just slow down again and all of this is still well within you know yes there's ranges which obviously says that you should also be more you know cautious really in the kinds of flows they like looking to take right u.s oil prices for example has risk continued up you know after hitting a low going back to thursday last week that was um it was the wednesday last mid last week that was on the 22nd of you know june and we've continued to grind higher in bits so like concerns So black concern is a major worry, but even having said that, though, we still have to, you know, still be more and more and more cautious. Finally, that we're heading into resistance level where we are right now, you know, where we are right now is it is this um, strong area of resistance there? What am I drawing? Moment. All right. You know, strong area of resistance around here. You can see the previous highs going back to fifth of May. You know, also on the uh, since they're about to May, you know, um, tested again on the 22nd and 3rd of May, you know, support here as well on the 3rd of June, you know, another one here as well, early last week, then now we're here. So despite the fact that we have that continuous push higher, you want to be more, you know, it just, it's nothing wrong is wrong with, you know, being more on the sidelines and waiting for something more concrete. I think that's you know, where we are right now in markets, right? Crossing over to the FX space, if you want to look at trend versus weakness, maybe card versus JPY or AD versus JPY, this is an example of card JPY, right? Right now we're heading into resistance. Yes, it's up today, about 96 pips already. Um, we have about 30 pips to go in terms of the ATR, but even with that, we're trading into resistance, right? Um, I don't want to really be buying into resistance. Now, I could have said that I want to wait for a pullback, you know, looking to enter, but with oil prices hitting resistance levels, I mean, with, cuts, with the environment being more tricky and messy, I mean, I really do not want to really be cut buying at levels like this. Even waiting for pullbacks, this would be better, but only if oil prices really clear out, you know, that level of resistance that we're currently trading at around one 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 dollar per barrel. Now, you want to look at AUDJPY2 and say, okay, how about this other one? But same story there, right? Currently trading, finding resistance at 94.5, you know, uh, previous highs you can see here and here and here, which is 
you know, um, another call for patience. Yes, yes, we've moved up so much already today. We still have about 30 pips to go on the ATR. If you want to see for something else, we're looking for a rotation back towards, you know, um, 94.00. I mean, that was also the highs basically for Friday and as well as Monday. Anything back to that level, maybe would be better. We had one back to R1, but I mean, in such close proximity to this key round number there, I'm not sure that's something I was looking out for. But anything back here, if catalyst, if sentiment remains positive, equities could be pushing higher. That would be an interesting one to look for for the upside on this particular one. But having said that, really, CHF though, now because we have risk off, risk on rather, a more positive environment, you know, buying CHF is a little bit tricky right now because sentiment doesn't really allow it. But, you know, you might want to look out for, you know, CHF in terms of upside, and again, something like, let's say, um, one of the weaker currencies, let's just pick one of the weaker currencies, um, let's say pounds, let's say pounds now. So you look at CHF versus the pounds, that's pound CHF, right? You might want to look at this and say, okay, how about this, right? Is there anything here? But yes, it might not be bad. We've been pushing lower for a while now, right? But you can see that even the pace of coming down has even slowed massively. We're finding support at this key 1.17 level. And then you look at that level as well, you know, it's also an interesting one going back way, way, way up to even 2019, mid 2019. So, I mean, we're in such environments where you want to be more patient and it's what I'm doing. And I think that, you know, it's not a bad idea if you're sitting on your hands and then keeping your money on, you know, keeping your money in your account so you have something concrete, you know, to leverage on. On the calendar today, like I said, it's mostly about central bank speakers, um, ECB Lane on the wires, um, ECB Elderson, um, Conlife as well, um, Panetta, you know, so many of them, even Dali, Dali is also on the wire as well for the Federal Reserve, but all of those things are what we're expecting. And then consumer confidence is that today for the US is also an interesting one to look out for. But all of those things said, I'm being more patient, I'm being more cautious and, um, I'm going to leave it at that, right? Um, if you have any questions, like always, please do not hesitate to ask. I would always do our best, you know, to help out. Thank you. Do enjoy the rest of your trading session. Bye for now.